Hey guys, welcome to Hot Topics. Uh, we are here with Omar and Ange again, going to get into uh, today's topic is what is my purpose? I think a lot of people, if they follow Jesus, following Jesus is the ultimate purpose. But then there's also assignments, there's callings, there's I guess you could say like mandates that God gives your life. And so we want to dive into that a little bit today. What is my purpose? But before we do, um, my random question for the day is this. Uh, you're a new addition to the crayon box. What color would you be and why? And here's mine. Ready? I've already predecided this. My color is I'm a zesty, fresh blue. Okay. Here's why. Because it's a classic color, but at the same time, you don't see me coming that's like zesty fresh blue you're like, like it's blue but what a toothpaste color <laughs> i guess the zesty okay i'm zesty fresh blue what are you what color would you be i would call it gaga and I that's the color the color is gaga it has to have oh, a name what okay but what color is it though what what like on Maybe the spectrum like see i want to say black people assume like say black you're gaga black is gaga it just black. really deep black yeah. or like a light like it's not that it's deep. deep it's like midnight it's like a not black, but lighter. I'd be just okay. not that deep. Is it kind of like black. this chalk wall kind of black? Yes. Okay. Just like that. <laughs> Omar, what are you? That's a really awkward question. I don't know how to answer it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I were to choose a color, I guess it'd be some type of orange. Just because okay. I like that it's like bright. Okay. Uh, I, is that my reason? I think you were, I think like, <laughs> no, no, no. I think here's, can I give it for you? Okay. I would, I think you would be called like oceans peace orange because you're just kind of chill. You're mellow. You just, sunset. yeah, you're oceans peace orange. Yeah. You're like a sunset orange. You're indie, so orange makes sense. There you go. I feel that. Okay, good. Good. New colors for crayon. Okay, great. Okay. Let's talk about what is my purpose. So Jesus in, in Matthew towards the end, he gives us what's, commonly known as like the great commission, right? He says, all authority has been given to me on uh, in heaven and on earth. Go therefore make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the, in the name of the father and the son and the Holy spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. So, so whatever context you're in, your call is to make more disciples, right? So there's, there's larger purpose, right? And then Jeremiah one five says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. So, so we understand that God has created us specifically, designed us. But then, how do we go about playing our part in the call of following Jesus? Because you know, you you wouldn't necessarily say my ultimate calling is to be a technical director, right? Or my ultimate calling is to you know be the experienced leader in youth. But how do you how do we walk in? In purpose. So, so what I want to ask you, Omar, is as you start following Jesus, how do you? What's your thought process, your decision making process, in following Jesus in the small steps? Because I think sometimes people are focused way too much on the big thing. You know, it's it's really the question that young people are asked, like, "What degree are you going to get? What are you going to do with your life?" That kind of thing. And that those are great questions to ask, but at the same time, the only way you get there is through a lot of small steps, right? So. What do you, how do, what's your thought processing, thought process in making small steps and following Jesus? I think my thought process in making small steps is approaching everything with like a heart of worship. I Like I used to, like music used to be a really big part of my life. And I say used to because I have sensed the Lord definitely changing a lot of that in me, but I definitely still love worship music. And so when it comes to just doing things little by little, uh, making small decisions, I, I guess what I mean about doing it with like a heart of worship is just reminding myself and knowing like, I mean, like in the small decisions, like even just waking up and coming here today, just remembering like, wow, like I get to do this for you. I get to do it for you, God. And I just try to remember that, that like, let everything I do be worship to you. Wow. I did not see that answer. Coming. <laughs> but I, but I believe the brilliance of it is you will make good decisions when you're not focused on you. Mm -hmm. If you are so self preserve 
preservation mode, if you're so about you, what you're saying is really brilliant is if I'm if my decisions are out of worship to the Lord, well then it's easy because my eyes are on him. Yeah. Right? Oh, that's so good. What about what about you, Ange? How do you make what's your thought process process when you're making small decisions? Um, I've learned to surround myself with people because I think I after serving in a certain amount of like capacity, I've learned that people is what matter. Yeah. yeah. And I've learned now that I, okay, Jesus, I love you and I'm all for that now, but like help me love your people. So I think being surrounded by the right people would help me figure out the small things because there's people in like my close friend group where they see big picture and some of us see small picture. So having that like diversity of like both because there's days where I'm focusing on this little thing and then they're like, you know, it's not big of a deal because at the end of the day, like having people, I think is what matters. But I think first you have to be okay with when you serve, you're doing it unto him. And then you serve amongst people and you serve people who he puts, you know, you around. So I think what helped me is like the people that I put around me because like the only thing to take you with you to heaven is people. That's right. So That's right. I just want to do that, you know, and God's there's so many people in this world, but like God gives you those people and you have to pray for that stuff. And I think that's the yes. next level I did when serving. Yeah. Being locked in with the right people is crucial. Yeah. I feel like even now more than ever, if we cannot, I, I say this so many times, I feel like it gets old for people maybe, but the image of the cross is my vertical relationship with Jesus and then how I live it out with people on this earth. Yeah. Yeah. And the living it out with people part is the harder part. Mm -hmm. I think we understand that worshiping and loving Jesus and him loving on us, that's about, that part is pretty awesome, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> that's good stuff. And the cross won't stand without the vertical. Mm -hmm. We understand that. The horizontal part, though, the working through issues, the loving people, but also getting the right people around you yeah. is crucial to continuing to follow him. The Bible says, woe to him who, f who is alone when he falls, right? And uh, I think that's so crucial. That is something that I see both of you not jumping into crowds that are suspect. <laughs> <laughs> like you're not somebody that I'm going to be seeing on Instagram and be like, what are you doing? Yeah. Or who are you hanging out with? Right? Like you guys keep yourself safe. Uh, another question I have here, I'll ask you, Ange, is what has been the key for you in the midst of difficult seasons, like when it comes to your purpose and and continuing to follow Jesus, what is what has been the key for you or a key for you in the midst of difficult seasons, continuing to pursue him? I think I had to first be okay with me and God for a while because there's a like, season where I just had to like disconnect from so many things and still do what I'm called to do, but I needed to take time where people would go out and I would have to, like, you know, like, you know, I'm going to go home and I would spend time with Jesus. And it, it was a good, I think, two years that I did that where, like, it looked like I had no social life, but I was really, like, digging deep because I wanted something and I knew that I had to lay something. Like, it was fully surrendering. And I know when I did that, even, I think, like, a new season kind of started when quarantine happened and I was stuck at home and I couldn't really serve. Like, I would come on a Sunday, but I knew um, God just highlighted to serve people. And he told me that, for me, I have to kind of take that step and reach like go reach out to people because that's not something I would usually do and he's like you need to fight for something if you really that's want good. it and then so I fought for that and I think during this whole three four months I've really got those like um sticky friends so people who I knew that like because I feel like I went through so many things during quarantine a lot of plucking and pruning yeah. but it wasn't alone and it was so refreshing to be able to spend time with Jesus and because that never stops like you always need to spend time with Jesus right. but when he brings you those people who um, it's a word from them or it's um, even just hanging out with them. God just really revealed to me like the importance of people. So like that's why I love coming and I love being here with everybody or when right. I'd watch the boys, like just people are what we're about and that's his business and I want to be about like my father's right. business. So that's good. in any way that I can, I make sure to surround myself with the right people because it's so easy to, you said, to jump in a crowd, but you have to really pray for those people and yeah. we even took time. Um, when I, a couple years oh, ago, yeah, when we that. like me, you and Kayla, like prayed for people in my life and like, it took him taking people out to put people in. And I think like, that's how it is with Jesus. Like he takes things away and then he gives back even more. So I think right. just being specific with your prayers and when you do that, like he answers it and that's what's helped me during that's those good. Like, difficult seasons. Absolutely. 
And just to clarify, when Ann says watch the boys, she's talking about my kids. She's not just a I boy watcher. Boys. So <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that's really good, Ange. And, and isn't it funny? Like you know, people would say, like, can you really pray for friends? Like, well, yeah, absolutely. Oh, Why yeah. not? <laughs> <laughs> right? And um, it is crucial h- how you have around you, Omar. In in the midst of difficult seasons in your life, what? How do you keep pursuing Jesus? Um, I love what Ange said about, you know, having the right people around because that can definitely take you a long way. Just being able to talk with somebody and like express mm-hmm. how you how you feel and what you're going through. It sometimes can do so much more than somebody like giving you a scripture or telling you to go pray, even though that's great. And you should absolutely pray to the Lord and read your Bible because that will help so much. Right. Friends are, are, are a huge part of it as well. And having the right friends at that. Um, uh, so for myself, I, I totally agree. Like having, having the right people with me uh, definitely helps me pursue um, and continue going on and following Jesus. And I think just another thing um, is just keeping hope in my heart, keeping hope mm-hmm. knowing that, uh, you know, the Lord has given us great promises. And that alone, I just try to focus my mind on that. You know, the Bible says to, to focus on what's true what's good and so just try to keep focus on you know what is jesus doing for me like what do you have next for me just keep keep looking forward you know like there's no there's no um purpose in dwelling in where you're at or even looking at the past like just let those things be and keep your eyes on jesus knowing he still has something more he always has something more there's so much more waiting right and boy that word that you said keeping hope in your heart is That is like radical what needs to happen for the young people of this generation because when you're hopeless, that is what causes so much of this anxiety, depression. Because if you're hopeless, I mean, there's so many situations in my life, even in the midst of getting into this whole pandemic quarantine time, I would thank Jesus so often like, Jesus, everything could be taken away from me right now and I'm still good because of you. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I am fine. Like I, my job, I could lose my job. I could whatever, but I know you're going to, I have hope in you, right? Like I have a way to you. And that word, when you can keep hope in your heart, keep, it's not just staying positive, but hope. The Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. Mm-hmm. When you, when you don't have hope in something, there is a, there. There is a sickness in this generation and it's a lack of hope. Yeah. It's a lack of hope that I have someone or something that I can look to. When Jesus is not present, there is no hope. You do not have any hope. I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, it's funny as I actually in the last like week or so, I don't know why, but I got like really into action movies. I, I realized that I had not watched all of the garden all of the avengers movies i had not watched a couple of the guardians of the galaxies and then i watched like a mission impossible okay so for some reason i got really into action movies for a few days and and i realized you know when you see a movie especially especially avengers i mean like infinity war was the worst ending of a movie ever right it seemed like there was no hope Uh right So so many action movies when you're watching them they, they the whole point is to take you on this emotional roller coaster and to get things so bad there's no way out i mean infinity war is the is the is the quintessential movie for that where it's like you know doctor strange calculates or whatever that there's one chance out of the however many millions of possibilities right there's no hope there's barely hope but in a sense the movies take you to this place where there's no hope. How are you going to get out of this? Well, what's funny for me is whenever I'm watching a movie, I love to get lost in the movie at the same time I have a brain. So <laughs> when you're 30 minutes when you're 30 minutes into the movie and it looks like there's no hope, you realize there's still an hour left in this movie. I have hope in the fact that this this thing's not over. <laughs> right? And maybe that's a word of encouragement for somebody who's even listening that hey, um, you're still alive. This thing's not over. There's still time, right? I think when you're young, you th- you feel like everything matters so much right now. You're a sophomore, a junior in high school. Like, you know, a friend backstabbed you. It matters so much. You know, I'm not saying that it that Jesus doesn't care about that. But at the same time, sometimes you've got to be able to go, I, I, I need to look at this in the perspective of yeah. heaven. Realize that God's got a greater purpose for my life. He's got so much more for me and that there is hope. Mm-hmm. And when you can keep hoping in your heart, like, yeah, that will change the way you see life. 
in a big way. You've Ange has Ange not only has walked with us and been so close with our kids, but you know, you've also you lived with us for a season as well when we had a, an extra room in an apartment. And you've gone through through some difficult things. Still in the midst of that, how how do you keep hope? How do you stay hopeful towards your relationship with him? Mm, I think um, it really came out of my time with him, like alone, because when I did that, because there were times where I'd be like, I when I live with you guys, and like there was all this stuff going on, and then I'd go to sleep, and I was like, how did I get through that? And it's like even having like the mentality of like the glass half full kind of thing. Because I'm someone that, like, before, like, knowing Jesus, I would, like, something, like, little happen, it would, like, mess with me for the rest of the day. And, like, I can put up a front, and, but then eventually it would, like, explode, like, a ticking time bomb. And I, like, ask God, like, let me not, like, what's important now, let it be important now. Like, I need you to, like, really give me that discernment. Like, Holy Spirit, like, come in and help me, you know? Like, I really had, it's an everyday thing, asking, and especially, um, there's this, like, little like inside joke we have with our friends we say like it's not that deep and in reality like, I really learned like it's one day I was driving like it's not that deep like there's things where I would um it was something small and I would dwell in it and I was like it's not that bad you know and yeah. I was reading this book even just like the title got me but it's like having living life with eternity in mind and that was already like where something yes. happened or let's say I was like I'm doing something with someone I said the wrong thing or I just messed up by accident like not letting that define me and like I can make it better, but I can't, like, the amount of time I could be wasting doing that. Yes. You know, and if I can do it now, do it now. And Pastor David said it, like, a long time ago when I was at internship, and he's like, if you could do something now, do it now. And I'm like, if I cannot dwell now, I'm not going to dwell now. If I can keep going, like, I'm going to keep going. That's right. So I think taking that, and it totally shifted my perspective. It was just, like, a little that. bit, too. But ever since then, it's been, like, a game changer for me, and I just yes. take the time, and it's yeah. not that deep. Because you know? the reality is most of the world is way worse off than we are yeah. as, a, as people in America. That, that the hopefulness and living life in light of eternity, mm-hmm. there are people who go through horrible things yeah. and yeah. who have gone through horrible things. And there may be someone listening to this who has gone through horrible things. Yeah. And we can get so focused on those things, never move on from our past, never allow Jesus to come and to be the comforter, to heal our hearts mm-hmm. and to set us free. But when we keep in mind, it's it's much easier to press through difficult things when heaven's on your mind. Yeah. Right. It's much easier to press through things when you when you remember, like, I'm bringing people with me to heaven. Mm -hmm. Right. Or 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 I'm going to spend eternity with him. These things are temporary. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, My dad used to have to say this. He said skin grows free, but it hurts. So basically saying that, like, yeah, you can get you can get you can get a scrape on your knee, son. You can get something. Yeah, it might hurt, but it's temporary. Yeah. Yeah. And that sometimes we are so focused on the pain that we are not focused on the other side of it. The hopefulness, the realizing that this too, this too will pass. I will be on the other side of this at some point. And to me, that makes it e- it's easier to surrender to Jesus when you can have that mentality. Yeah, because if you when you're not letting go of the things that are not of him, it's because you feel like I, I, I won't f- have fulfillment. I have no hope mm-hmm. in a sense, but people need the hope That's of Jesus. That's really good. And I think about, you just you said what your dad said. Like I actually, I fell a couple of days ago and I scraped, <laughs> it was, I like fell hard and like I ate it and I like scraped my <laughs> knee and like I, like it didn't stop my day. Like I still have like the scab on my knee and like I can sometimes feel it, but it like, even when I choose, like, in, like, a spiritual sense when something uh, hurts, like, there's time where God gives us time to process it and stuff, but it's not, like, um, consuming me. Yes. Like, it's still, there's a healing process. Yes. Some things go quick, some things take a healing process, right. and there's exposure, and it hurts when something's exposed. Right. But you can still keep on, and it's hard for people, I think, nowadays to even to see people like us live like that because with so much stuff going on in the world, you know, it's not normal to see, like, people be hopeful. Oh, yeah. things or full of yeah. joy yeah and i think for us i think we do it out of just serving and it comes back to like we're not out on like a pulpit and we're not saying all these things mm-hmm. and well i know that's not well i'm not called to right now but i know that just living my day-to-day especially in this whole thing going on right now that like that's ministering to someone so it's yes. back all the way back to like there's still hurt but jesus like help me still push through that hurt yeah. you know i don't want to sit and dwell in it mm-hmm. yes it's very important yeah hope bro you blew this episode up with the word hope 
<laughs> did you have something to say before we close? Uh, yeah, I mean, just, you know, the, the reality of, like, pain that we experience, like, there's not to say that that is, like, diminished, you know, because it's Absolutely. very real when you're feeling it, when you're going through it, you're going through it, you know, and I love, I love the quote that, uh, I forgot who said it, but he says, when if you're going through hell, like, keep going, you know, you're going through it, you're not, you're not meant to stay there, you're not gonna stay there, because there's always hope. There's yes. always hope in Jesus, and we can always count on that. And uh, really, that's that's where it is. And I, I love how you said, you know, when when we're going through all these things, if we have the mentality, uh, like a heaven mentality, just remembering that there is a heaven, and we can bring people with us. And yes. in the end, um, in the end, there's great joy. Yes. And, and that's that's that that's what's true. waiting. <laughs> yeah, that is what's waiting. God is so good. Well, we love you guys. Uh, thank you for tuning into hot topics we pray that this is a blessing to you by the way in the chats or comments or anything we would love to know what you guys would like us to talk about as we continue to move forward with some of these topics but have a great rest of your day and let's keep following jesus together